I really enjoy it overall. However, there's always a caveat. And as I moved on from the Craig Rip Cut, I'm not going to move on from the saw because I think it's an, an excellent saw for the things that I use it for. I did find one gripe with it though. So obviously, if I wanted to, let's say, make a, you know, say a, a cut on this board, I can just lay my track saw down, or my track down on the piece of wood, right? And I can just, you know, map out my lines and then put the, the track on there, match it up and make the cut, and that's fine. But let's say I need two, three, four, five, ten pieces of the exact same uh, width. Well, what I realize is, you know, this is one of the, you now obviously for a piece of wood this size, I could just do it on a table saw and I get consistent pieces because of the fence. Well, with the track saw, um, the, the strength is also, it also can be looked at in, in a way as a weakness because when I measure and say the first time I measure, so let's say four inches, I'm a little bit shy of four inches, maybe because of the blurred uh, cur uh, blade curve. Well, then I have a piece that's just under four inches, and then I go to cut out the next strip that's supposed to be exact match, and now I have just over four inches. So then when I go to put together my assembly, it's going to be kind of lopsided, maybe just by millimeters, but the bottom line is it won't be perfectly square. It won't be very. It won't be exactly uniform. And so um, I wanted to find something that would actually combat that, and that's when I ended up learning about um, parallel uh, guide systems, and then also about the um, guide rail uh, square, which gives you the ability to. So it gives you a guide rail square which gives you the ability to fasten something this way to the wood, giving you a 90 degree angle here, which means that like if I was going to lay a piece of wood out like this, So say I was going to lay a piece of wood out like this, and I wanted to cross cut it. And let's say my piece, you know, I wanted to make sure it was, you know, that this edge and the cut were actually 90 degrees. The guide rail square would fasten here, and it would give me a 90 degree, which would give me, when I would cut with my track saw this way, I would actually have a perfectly 90 degree angle to this uh, front face. One of the weaknesses of the Dewalt track saw is um, being that it is actually um, basically ambidextrous, you can cut on, on either side of the rail, um, it only has a T-track in the middle of the bottom where you could put a clamp. It does not have like say a Makita or a Festool uh, rail, uh, a T-track on top of the rail where you can attach things like a parallel guide system or a guide rail square to give you added functionality. I personally, um, there would be times when I would be, you know, trying to build something and maybe one of my pieces was a little bit out of square and um, you'd like to take a tool like one of these and try to actually, you know, cut across you know, a whole sheet of plywood and actually ensure that this is a 90 degree cut. Well, with a, um, a guide rail attached to a track, you can get something like that, you know, that will butt up against one surface of your, one side of your wood and give you the ability to cut a 90 degree uh, cut off. Um, I looked into buying a, a tool such as this, you know, like just one piece route right, and I think 
you know, for a machined one, it was like four or five hundred dollars just for that piece. And I think it may have only been a forty-eight inch um, span potentially. I may be wrong about that, but it was pretty pricey. And I was like, wow, you know, I can actually buy a whole track saw for that. So I didn't really feel like that was a good um, a good purchase. So I went ahead and I decided after owning my, my dual track saw and loving it, loving the uh, accuracy of the cut that I was getting and the ability to be able to, you know, obviously cut straight without any problems.